In 2020, our communities reckoned with a deadly global disease exacerbated by racism, discrimination, and poverty. In a year of tremendous loss and suffering, communities around the nation came together to grieve and organize. The pandemic has really just um, highlighted and elevated the fact that like we do need to make a lot of like transformative reforms to a lot of the systems, right, that we have, or just create new systems, to be honest. Like, as we continue to work toward a more equitable future for Black, Brown, Indigenous people and immigrants, we enter the second half of 2021 reassured by our lived experiences and devoted to the sort of homework we were assigned over the last year. I feel like it's important to look into the different aspects of our daily lives hit hard in this pandemic and remember the things we learned in order to keep our momentum moving forward. The COVID-19 pandemic forced America to reckon with a healthcare system that excludes the most vulnerable communities and individuals. Millions of Americans without health insurance continue to live at risk at the mercy of a virus that disproportionately affects people of color. The pandemic further revealed cracks in who gets care, affirming the systemic challenges low-income people of color experience in attaining quality health care. COVID-19 also reaffirmed that the United States is built on essential labor, and our daily society depends on the labor of people, especially women of color, to keep us and our families fed and cared for. When COVID hit, it was just shine, like I said, shine the light on the fact that like actually childcare is like it's like the backbone to our economy. Like we actually need a functional childcare system in order for our economy to build back from this pandemic. And as a black woman, I am really, really concerned about what women are facing during this pandemic. Not only are we struggling just like everyone else is with regular basic things, you know, paying rent, needing rental assistance, needing that direct cash payment of $2,000 a month, every month, right? Needing unemployment. But we are also struggling with child care. We need the government to put $100 million into child care to rectify some of the issues that we're having with lack of access, to keep child care centers open. People of color are also overrepresented in fields that were most vulnerable to pandemic layoffs, emphasizing another disproportionate impact on marginalized communities. I am really concerned about what's happening with women in the workforce. In December, Almost all the jobs that were lost were to women. In January, we lost 275,000 women out of the workforce. Like, really? It's ridiculous. What does that say for the future of women working, right? What does that say for future generations? We learned that until all of us are free, none of us are free. We learned that the movement toward racial justice is ongoing. We learned that Black lives matter. We learned that collective activism through protests, grassroots organizing, digital campaigns can make tangible impacts. We affirmed over and over the value of Black lives, period. George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, Tony McDade, Richard Brooks, Daniel Prude, and so many others, lives gone too soon, and deaths that weighed on families and communities right in our backyards. Minneapolis over the past year has been, uh, I think, just in the center of a racial justice movement in America and the world. Since May 25th, you know, I think the organizing world has changed, but also organizing in Minneapolis has also changed, where we're focused more on racial and economic justice. When the uh, Derek Colvin defense were taken over in their most racist charge moment was when Dante Wright was shot in the back. So I can't, I can't, I can't explain to you as just an activist and organizer who has been beating a drumbeat about police accountability in this city how it much it pained my heart to continually watch this happen over and over. We learned the power of collective healing across communities. From Black Lives Matter and Stop Asian Hate, we understood that we must stand together to see the kind of change that will bring justice and accountability to our communities. We celebrated victories along the way. A day that will 
reign glorious for African Americans. Uh, it would be a day that would be looked at with joy for putting killer cops in prison. I was in my apartment and I got word that the verdict had came in. And I got dressed, I threw on clothes and I rushed down to Hennepin County Government Center. I was surrounded by thousands of people and we're talking about a multi-racial coalition, all generations um, led by young African-Americans who are leading the chant and are leading the speeches. I was out there and the moment of the guilty verdict, it was jubilation in the streets. When we heard he was guilty on all three, we started chanting all three, all three. It was a period of black joy in this city uh, that I can't even express. Um, and in that moment, I actually felt that we were had made a step in the right direction. We learned that grassroots organizing during a pandemic is possible and effective. There was so much interest and so much excitement and so much energy around this election. And then of course the pandemic hit and I think like the rest of the country, the election um, sort of infrastructure and campaigners were all taken aback by a pandemic. Um, and we had to rapidly adjust the way that we reach out to folks and talk to folks about the issues. We voted in leaders who look like us, who make decisions based on their lived experiences to guide crucial legislative policies. We learned that when it's easier to vote, more people will vote. I think the biggest lesson that I learned, and I, and I hope a lot of people learned as well, was not to be afraid to try new things and just see what works. We had volunteers host online house parties, uh, which you know normally would be done like in someone's backyard. We learned that BIPOC communities deserve voices in politics. We celebrated historical firsts with Vice President Kamala Harris and elected leaders of color in states that traditionally did not elect leaders of color. We as a movement have to do more to reach people where they're at. You know, folks have a lot of diverse opinions that deserve to be represented and we need to be listening to what you know, the voters and the citizens actually uh, want and promote that. I think that is the one thing that I hope we move for moving forward is like really driving a sense of community from the issues that people really um, care about. If we raise up the bar for black and brown women and men um, to have like, well, black and brown people, period, to have like, you know, more uh, opportunities to to advance in this world, right? And to make a decent living in this world, I think it would be, we'd be in a much better place. I'm going to continue to protest in the city. <laughs> the conviction of Derek Coven and getting justice or getting accountability for him murdering George Floyd is not going to stop us from protesting. I want to make that completely clear. So we're going to keep protesting in this city and around the country. So we're going to keep protesting and I'm inviting folks to join us. We need to continue to stay organized. At the end of the day, we've learned that in an interconnected world, a global pandemic is never far from reality. But the continued organizing, advocacy and fighting is far from impossible too. There's never been a better time to propel our movements forward. And with these lessons in mind, a better America is right around the corner.